So, um, this week, while I was away, I got a package, or rather, Grady got a package. Really? Yeah. You, you sent him... Talking about me? You sent him this. I which did. Is, is a little treat mouse. Yes. Full of treats and stuff. You also I sent... turns my sweet cats into little mob enforcers. You sent all of the fucking cat food... They're treats that go in the treat mouse. It's so that he'll have a full treat mouse for as long as he wants. Except, you uh -oh. sent him this. He doesn't know how to work it. Oh, no. I filled oh, it up. Knock it over. I, yes, I filled it up, and I put it on the floor, and he sniffed at it, and he licked it a whole lot. Did you try showing him? Like, knocking it over for... Because Dottie picked it up right away. Peggy, I did have to show her. And... and she gets it. He, he got bored with it and walked away. <laughs> oh. See, I put it down for these two, and it's like little mob bosses on someone that owes them money. He, he, does, he, he does not know how to work the, the treat. In fact, they have trouble getting to the one or two treats at the bottom. They will just straight up... Dottie will pick it up to the top of the tower and drop it until its head falls off. Great, oh. you want to, you want to, because you're not going to, you're not going to be able to work it. But... You got to show him, knock it over and make a treat fall out. Okay, here. And maybe he'll... Look, treats fell out. I just did it. He's eating the treats. He doesn't really care about the mouse. Yeah, he's eating the treats. He didn't give a shit about the mouse. <laughs> oh, I thought he'd enjoy it. Because these little miscreants loves it, don't you? Mom, I'm trying to sleep. Could you not? I'm sorry, Peggy. And I will point out, you send all of this food. They're treats. For my already heavy cat, who I pulled my back out on air tonight trying to pick up. I didn't, in my defense, I didn't know that at the time. Uh-huh. I sent it last week. I have to bring these two chunk of dunks to the vet, and I'm a little worried they're gonna tell them tell me to put them on a diet. Cause they're getting to be little chubsters. Cause I do Wonder do this like once a day and I always give them my food and Don't give them to people food. They like bacon. Don't give them the well, Dottie, though, you have to give her very small pieces, and she doesn't like it crispy, so you have to find, like, the soft pieces and break it up very small, or she won't eat it. Peggy likes the crispy. Don't give them the people food. But they like it. It makes them happy. And ham. We like ham. Anyway. Come here, Dottie. Say hello to the internet while you're finishing Peggy's dinner. Come here. While you're slurping that fish slime nice and loud. Hi, Internet. I'm busy. I'm playing. Look at the camera. Oh, look at the camera. Oh, you got fish breath. Get out of here. So, let's get to the nonsense. Well, hopefully Grady learns how to operate the treat mouse. He's eating his own food right now. He's 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 ignoring the treat mouse. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the world wide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little something we like to call "What the fuck is wrong with you?" Crazy. And uh, crazy I, I, I think this might start becoming a regular feature. So um, because last week, you'll recall, we started with some tweets from the, uh, press secretary. Yeah. The president of the United States of America. Mike said he just did it again. Yeah, um, this happened this week. And now, and now Tara's too, I'm, what the fuck Every fucking time I change shots, something in this goddamn program, I don't even know anymore. Now you are loud again. I don't understand. I don't understand. 
going to have to go through and debug this whole fucking thing. All right. Now I'm too loud. Now everything's too loud. Now everything sucks. Anyway, um, so Sean Spicer, if you'll remember last week, he is the press secretary for the White House. And uh, he... Uh, Dippin' Dot's personal nemesis. And just to show everybody this week that this is absolutely true, I did not make this up. This, our first story comes from Snopes. Our, uh, our, our, our press secretary, the White House press secretary. Yeah, um, he very well may be an idiot. Maybe. Like, for real, like, idiot. White House press secretary Sean Spicer retweeted the Onion satirical video about him. Oh, no. Leaving some social media users confused. Here's what happened. The, the Onion made a video, and it says, quote, Sean Spicer's role in the Trump administration will be to provide the American public with robust and clearly articulated misinformation. Now, if you have basic reading comprehension, you understand this is not a compliment. No. This is uh, alluding to the fact that uh, you are a liar, that you have been lying to people. Um, and... Spicer retweeted it with the words, not making this up, you nailed it, period. Oh, God. I thought we were going to talk about him tweeting out his password twice in two days. Oh, he did that? Yeah, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Um, I didn't even know about this shit. Yeah, he, um, he, 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 he agreed with the Onion's assessment that he is, in fact... A professional liar. I mean, yay for accidental moments of transparency. Yeah. Well, what what is that? That old definition of the of a gaffe. There's, there's an old political definition of a gaffe. It, it's some goes something like um, a political gaffe is when a politician accidentally tells the truth. Yeah. <laughs> Human, get the treats out of this contraption for me. <laughs> I can smell them, but I can't get to them. Grady ain't having it tonight. Oh, Grady. You want to come here? Grady? <gasps> wow. You want to come here? You want to come here? <laughs> he is whiny. He is very whiny. People are saying, he is so whiny. He is very whiny, as you can hear, all day, every day. See, I like that, though. I kind of wish my girls were more chatty. This is not chatty. This is annoying. Like, Peggy chirps at you. Wait, or she'll she'll meow when she's looking for you, and she doesn't know where anybody is. And Peg Dottie will peep at you if she's hungry. Uh, well, if you're going to yell, you're going to come here. Stop it. And I'm confident that on the way to the vet, I will hear the song of their people. Because they do not like being in the car. Grady, you're holding up the show, Grady. Grady, you're holding up the show. I am the show, motherfucker. And yes, also what happened this week was the press secretary for the White House, not once, but twice, tweeted his own password in public. And it was obviously one of those randomly generated passwords. Yep. So Not that led everyone on the internet to try and reset the password themselves and take over the account. And then they found out that that account is attached to a Gmail account. A Gmail account. Do you know what Gmail is? As is the POTUS account. Do you know what Gmail is? A private email server? A private email server. Now, a did, not government bound by the laws of records email server? Wasn't there someone late recently in the news who had... I mean, we would never elect somebody who did something like that. No, we never would. That, that's just unconscionable. That is the worst thing possible. Yeah, I know. <sighs> America. 
They're gonna be so mad. Like the co the YouTube comments are gonna be amazing. Fuck them. I have to live with this shit, you assholes. Fuck you. I live in this country. I mean, I guess technically we could ignore it and just sit here and do dick jokes. But, but I feel like that would be kind of disingenuous because this is where we're fucking living right now. Instead, we can cover it and do dick jokes. Why not both? Why not both? Oh, like, I'm not, it's kind of hard to pretend that there aren't people like sitting in an airport for 20 hours that already went through two years of vetting and are now like, nah, fuck you, <sighs> sit in for the next two days. You have to be, be quiet now. Quiet, we're trying to do the show. We're trying to do the show. I have something important to say. No, you don't. You're purring now. <laughs> Remember when you when you didn't think Grady liked you? And now a year later, he will not shut the fuck up and leave me alone. This kid hates me. We're never going to be friends. We're still not friends. He's just annoying the fuck out of me now. Oh, you're friends. You're like, like, odd couple buddy cop movie friends. Like, you don't even know how BFF you are. So, let's move along to just our regularly scheduled idiocy. Have you ever had to go to ask a neighbor for uh, something, like the proverbial cup of sugar? Uh, yeah. I've, I've had to do this very rarely. I think one time I had, I had to ask for jumper cables. And I don't know what it is about me, but it all, I'm always just so self-conscious about asking people I really don't know all that well for favors. So I tried to... We had a neighbor come over while we were having a party to ask if someone could help us break into her car because she locked her keys in her car. Uh. And the next day she saw Dan out in the yard and she asked him if he was a teacher. And he said, no, why would you say that? And he goes, oh, she said, oh, well, I thought you had all your students over. Because apparently our friends look younger than Dan. He was not amused. Poor Dan. Not really. I pulled my back out tonight. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> um, normally, if I'm in that circumstance, I'm very self-conscious and I want to try to be very polite. Yeah. Overly polite, even. Um, this, this is what I would not do. Man with mop on head and seeks egg in Port St. Lucie. It's Florida. A man is accused of having a mop on his head was arrested after a neighbor reported a mop-wearing man terrified his entire family. James Disney Field, spelled with a Z, 58 of Southeast Marsh Avenue in Port St. Lucie was arrested on a disturbing the peace charge. Man identified as the victim told Port St. Lucie police a man banged on his door about 8 p.m. He said he opened the door and saw a man with a mop over his face as if it were a mask. The victim didn't understand the mop donning dude, so he closed and locked his door. He said the mop man banged on the door window. He also rang the doorbell with the end of the damaged mop. Uh, this is a great line in the story. This was actually written by... Who wrote this? Um... Will Greenlee, oh, Will Greenlee, of course, wrote this. Um, mops are not commonly used as disguises or Halloween costumes. Really? Uh, I disagree with that because I had a Raggedy Ann costume as a kid and my mom made the wig out of an old mop head. Police found the alleged mop man, identified as Fields, as he threw paper on a fire in his garage. Police communicated with Fields, who is hearing impaired by writing, Asked why he knocked on the neighboring home with a mop over his face, Fields stated, quote, because I was born a comedian, and I like to tease people, I was short of an egg and needed eggs to make a cake. That's two different reasons. <laughs> and if, if, if that's, if that's your idea of interacting with the neighbors, I'm not sure I want any cake you're going to bake for me. I, I, I feel like there might be secret ingredients. That's... That, what? 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 
What has, what the fuck just happened? I am a comedian, therefore I'm putting a mop on my head to ask for an egg. Okay, yeah, but but normally, I mean, I what? Maybe then, like when your neighbor jumps, you then take the mop off your head and go, "Ha ha, that was funny." I need to borrow some eggs. Yeah, don't keep banging on the door and pushing the doorbell. You're scaring people because, hey, we don't normally go out in public with mops on our heads. Not generally. That's not a thing we do. It's... It's like, it's a joke, get it? No, I don't. I don't get the... This... Was it like dirty mop? I got... Oh, I don't know. That's gross. Nothing here makes sense. Nothing, you know, I'm not... Even is this Dadaism? That's a good question. <laughs> maybe, maybe he's the anti-comedian. I, I'm not. I would never go so far as to dub myself a professional doing this nonsense because I have a screaming cat in my lap, obviously. But still, even I kind of have the base precepts of okay, you're going to start screaming again. You're just going to start screaming again. Even I have the base precepts of comedy down, I believe. And none of those involve scaring my neighbors on purpose. With a mop. With a mop. I have, granted, in fact, I have scared neighbors accidentally on occasion. To be fair, you did on Halloween answer the door for trick-or-treaters in a My Little Pony outfit. But nobody showed up, so. Oh. No harm, no foul. Ugh. So, moving along. Okay. I would like to think that it might come to that, given the way this administration is going. At some point, if I needed to be bailed out, I could probably count on you. Yes? Yeah. Yeah. And and I, if I had the means and the, and the ability, I, I would... Grady wasn't testifying against you. Grady, you, you want to get put out? Oh, did you knock over your tiny cat friend? Okay. Grady. Was she being a bitch? I I'm gonna I'm gonna lock you out. Oh, don't do that. I'm trying to do a setup here and you're being loud. You're trying to reason with a cat. It's never gonna work. Trust me. You want treats, Grady? <laughs> there we go. That word. That word he knows. He knows that word. You want treats? Will you shut the fuck up if we give you treats? You little screamy bastard. Treats. Oh, you're so cute. Treats, Grady, here. Here, meat stick. Here's your meat stick. See the meat stick? Go get the meat stick. There he goes. Was that a meat rock? No, it's like a kitty Slim Jim. That's how they make it. Anyway, um, I, I would like to think if we were in that circumstance, I could count on a friend to attempt to get me out of jail. There are procedures for this. Yes. This is not one of them. Man accused of faking, of faxing jail, fake court record, court letter to get friend released. Huh. 23-year-old man pled not guilty Wednesday to abuse of public records charge after police say he faked he faxed a fake court memo to jail staff in an attempt to release his friend. Uh, Justin A. Colbert became the target of a Lincoln police investigation after Lancaster County jail staff reported receiving a suspicious fax July 23rd. Fax reported to be from Lancaster, Lancaster County Court staff saying a bond payment of $25,000 had been made. Uh, for an inmate there detained in a weapons case, and he should be released. That would be clever, if not for the next paragraph. But the courts were closed that day, as it was a Saturday, and the facts had been sent through a web service with an attached email and phone number that didn't belong to county court. Now, you're saying, okay, well, he tried. No, no. Investigators narrowed in on Colbert after learning the computer the fax was sent from belonged to one of the re one of his residents 
and Colbert served jail time with an inmate named in the fax. The email address used in the fax belonged to Colbert. They can track that. They... Like, that was a creative idea. Points for creativity. Hello, Mr. Jailman. I am from the court. All I'm... the points taken away for execution. I am from the court, and I have come to give you the money for my friend. The monies have been paid. Please release. Not my friend. Wait, did I say my friend? I met this guy. <laughs> I mean this person that I have never met before. Here is my totally court email address, which is not Hotmail. Yeah. It's, it, it's good to have a creative idea. But a good idea is nothing without execution. It's like, come on, guys. Gotta really? have that follow through. Really? It's like you had the first part of the idea, and then your ass got lazy. And then it all just went... Crime? Kids, I'm going to tell you right now, crime takes effort. It's like anything in life. It might seem like crime is the easy way to get money. It's simple. No, no. no. Work at it. It's hard work. Everything in life is hard work. You got to work to get good at it. This is not. that you, you tried to do with your electronic internet doodads to do crime the easy way. And I'll tell you, easy crime does not pay. Nope. Because you suck at it. I think I'm giving them the wrong lesson here. <laughs> um, Take pride in your crime. Uh, so how oh, cold goodness. how cold has it been around you? It's pretty fucking cold. It's supposed to snow tomorrow, but I don't know how much. When I left, it was like 40, 50 degrees here. When I got back, there was a layer of fresh snow on the ground. And then it's going to go back up to being 40 degrees later this week. So I don't know. Because but, the world is dying. Yeah. I'm, I'm, not too, I'm not a big fan of being out in the cold. I kind of like the cold because it's easier to get warm than it is to cool off so i'm kind of a fan of that but i'm not willing to go out into it all that much if i don't have to and i certainly i, I don't go walking in it and i certainly don't do this jesus god just just reading about this story is making every it's making bits of me want to retract Naked cyclists lead police on caper during sub-freezing night. Really? It's from Austria. An out-of-control nude cyclist. That is a great opening line. Yeah. An out-of-control nude cyclist, cyclist was detained in Valash in western Austria on Tuesday after making a nuisance of himself on a drunken nighttime joyride in temperatures of minus 13 Celsius. Now somebody, how, how, uh, how? Somebody do the math. Somebody do math, because we're stupid Americans and we were raised with Fahrenheit. We can't do, do temperature right. Um, according to a report from state broadcaster ORF, the young man tried to steer his cycle through the revolving door of a hotel, pulled a fire alarm in the hotel's garage, then abandoned his bike and ran off through the city with the police in pursuit. Um, police say he was very drunk, probably wasn't aware of these sub-freezing temperatures, though he was lucky not to get frostbite on his extremities. Um, the fire brigade was alerted after the man set off the fire alarms. They found his shoes and clothes in a heap, and a short while later discovered the naked prankster hiding behind a pillar in the garage. The man, uh, as the fire brigade, uh, arrived, the man jumped on his bike and fled, abandoning it a short while later. The police tracked him down to the city center. He was, after all, pretty easy to identify. Ah, that is eight degrees Fahrenheit. Now, bicycle seats are not the most comfortable. <laughs> I that they're not the most comfortable thing to have pressed against your nethers. No, they're not. No, they're as I not. recall, no, nope. I haven't been on an actual bike in a while. Yeah. Also, most bikes are metal, and I'd be a little worried in those extreme temperatures of, like, winding up, like, flick on the pole in a Christmas story. Except not your tongue. 
Exactly. Not, That's not so much yet. worse. I mean, is is that? I mean, at that temperature, his dick was probably an any by then. So I guess he was probably okay. Is the guy's name Icy Wiener? Oh, that's nice. That's good. That's good. No, it was Anthony Wiener. Was he triple dog dared? Oh, maybe. Got some Christmas story. I have this weird like mashup in my brain now of Jackass and Waking Ned Divine. <laughs> Do you know the sequence in Waking Ned Divine where the little old man rides the motorcycle naked? Yes. I have this weird mashup of that and Jackass happening in my head. I why would you put put your pants on? Yeah. I mean a jacket. Your drunken mischief is not enhanced by your dick. You're, you're you're actually as I pointed out, you're actually making it easier for them to arrest you because there's not gonna be that many naked people out because frostbite. It's really cold. Yeah. You just I Mother of God. And sadly, before it occurred to me that the reason he would be easy to identify is because there wouldn't be that many naked people, where my mind went was does he have a really distinctive penis? <laughs> like, does he have that? Dra is is this the dragon penis tattoo guy? <laughs> no. Uh, that, oh well, no. It's just that most people aren't outside naked when it's eight degrees. Yeah, it's in Austria, cool. people do wear pants. That that is a thing they do in Austria. I, I know it's that that is a thing that happens. Oh, we haven't had one of these in so long. It's almost quaint. It's almost quaint when we have a story like this. We haven't, and we got video. We got video. Let's uh, let bring up the video here. Try and see this feller. Um, let let's have a look at this guy. This is this takes place at a guitar center in where where was this located? They never make it easy to find that the the state. They have not caught this guy yet. Um, well, here's the video. Shall we? Let's look. Oh, I heard about this on the radio. Yeah, this is this came from uh, Guitar Center. And uh, there he is. He's, he's in the back there. And what you're seeing him do is take a guitar and put it in his pants. And this is on store security camera. He's, he's rocking the Mar Marty McFly vest there, no less. And um, yeah, there you go. And now he's just casually walking out of the store with a guitar in his pants. Is that a whammy bar in your pocket, or are you just stealing a guitar? Fort Worth, okay, this is Texas. Fort Worth say a man walked out of a music store with a guitar hidden in his pants. The man wearing a dark colored tracksuit and a bright orange vest is seen picking up the guitar and stuffing it underneath his clothes. About 30 seconds, he walks out way with his hands in his pocket. Police say he walked out of the store with a tobacco sunburst Fender guitar worth a list price of $1,549. That would make it a Fender American Deluxe. Oh, or they still do Deluxe anymore? The Elite. Look at you with the knowledge. It might, well, it depends. If it's a 2015, I think 2015 or 2016 or later, that would make it a Fender Elite. If it's an earlier than that, it's a, it's a Fender American Deluxe. But yeah, that's the high end Stratocaster he put in his pants. I like how he's trying to look all casual while he can't bend one leg. He he put he put the he put a guitar in his pants. Now, he really does not want to be identified because if you can fit a whole guitar in your pants, that's sort of telling the ladies there's a lot of room down there. Oh. That's that's Maybe he was just wearing really baggy pants. That that's kind of advertising. Um, th there there's room to let. <laughs> there's 
I mean, how wide is an electric guitar? It's only like, what, that wide? It's this wide, it's widest point. No, I'm talking like, I the guess. Neck, yes. The neck is like that. But so it's this wearing, big. If you're wearing some pretty baggy pants, you could have it up like, you could have like the, I don't know what guitar parts are called, but you could have them, the big part up on like your abs. The body. Yeah. I just, it, that's some audacity, that's the audacity of the motherfucker. So then you gotta worry about getting excited, because you'll start playing chords. <laughs> Bling. What was that? Nothing. You look pretty today. <laughs> I gotta go. If you see someone he really likes, he'll start belting out smoke on the water. Yeah. <laughs> Will you stop making noise? Will you stop making noise? No, love me. Goofy little furball. Look at this. He's so floofy. I can hear him purring. He's loud. He just wants to be loved. That, that, is, that is some pretty audacious shit. To walk into a store and walk out... With a guitar that could qualify as a down payment on a used car. Did he did he make it out? Did yeah, nobody... they haven't caught him. Wow. It worked. Like somebody got fucking fired at the guitar. Oh center. fuck yes, they got fired. Cause that that's one of those guitars. They I don't know if you've ever been in a guitar center, but I... they have like they have levels of the guitar racks on the wall. And they put the really cheap ones down at the bottom. And then they put the mid ones in the middle and all the way up at the top where you have to get a ladder and a store associate to help you. So presumably somebody would have had to get this down for him. Yes. Yeah, so you, they'll let you. And then left him unattended with it. Yeah. They'll let you in a guitar center. They'll let you demo a guitar in the store. But someone had to climb the ladder and get the guitar down and then let him alone with right. the $1,500 guitar. Yeah, that's a no-no. That's a no-no. Long enough for him to do this. To shove it down his pants. And I'm pretty sure rubbing a, your dick on a guitar kind of lowers the resale value. Yeah, probably. Unless you're Bowie. True. Because that one... That, or that, maybe Prince. Yeah, Prince. That, that, a lot of people would pay for Prince's dick sweat. Yeah, that really, yeah that, that's sort of better than an autograph, depending on yeah. who we're talking about. But, um, but you, Joe Schmo, your dick is not worth that much. Nope. You're, you're, you don't have a magical dick. Finally this week... Also, having stepped on a guitar string before... Those things hurt like a motherfucker. Oh, yeah. They're, they're, they're fucking wired. So yeah. I would not want those in the area of my body with the most sensitive nerve endings, personally. The shit, I have, the shit I have to do to get this cat to behave himself. Would you look at this? He loves his human. This little whiny twit. I love you, human. Will you stop? Will you stop? I've got to do one more story, and then will you stop? Peggy here gets very upset if we're looking at our phones, and Would she you will, she will like put her body in between you and the phone, or she'll sit on your lap, but then wrap her tail around your phone so you can't see it until you like have to put it down and pay attention to her. Like she's relentless. Would you kindly? I've got shit to do. All right. Last story. Um. I'm really not, when I go to the TSA, I'm always paranoid. And I'm always like, I check my belongings to make sure I have as little potentially suspicious or attention drawing on me at all, as all possible. I have to make sure I've left all my screwdrivers and wire snippers and stuff at home, all my tools out of my bags, uh, anything that could be construed as abnormal, which in the TSA parlance is very broad. So then I read a story like this and I'm wondering how did you possibly miss this one trying to get through security? Because this guy 
shut down a whole airport because he was a fucking idiot. <gasps> Grenade type device. Shut up. Found by TSA causes delays. Jaeger Airport, Charleston, West Virginia. More information has been released about an incident that caused delays Monday morning at Jaeger Airport, including the name of a man who carried an inactive grenade into the airport. Look at his name. Oh, that's an amazing name. I th This is one for the Hall of Fame, everybody. Remember this name. John Greg Goody Coots. Wow. Of Bridgeport, West Virginia, was issued a citation for attempting to carry a prohibited item, quote, into the sterile part of the airport and transporting or possession of a hoax bomb. Um, airport officials say the bomb squad with the uh, Kanawha County Sheriff's Department responded to the scene and found the item was an inactive grenade-type device. It's found in the carry-on bag of an outborn passenger. Carry on. He put this through the x-ray machine. That's not good. They're not going to let you have it. It's a fucking grenade. No, it's okay. It don't work, guys. Fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. It don't work. <laughs> they don't take your word for that shit. You can't have that. It's, it's a fuck. It's a. How do you spell the last name? It is G O O D Y K O O N T Z. Goody Coots. Goody Coots. John Greg Goody Coots. Second cousin to John Jacob Jinkelheimer Schmidt. Not a lot of people know that. This, this, what, what the fuck? Man, I tell you, when I walk through TSA, even if I know I ain't done shit and I'm perfectly fine, I'm still nervous as fuck. Dan has that pre-check thing where like he did a bunch of interviews with Homeland Security yeah and now he just sails through he doesn't have to take off his shoes or anything and he keeps telling me I should do it and I'm like if they put like I haven't done anything but if they put me in a room with some fucking Homeland Security people I'm gonna start admitting to shit I don't even know about just out of nerves yeah exactly like, I, I, I I'm not built for being interrogated and this I like, yes, I did it. I'm sorry. You did what? I don't know. And this motherfucker, this 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 motherfucker right here walking on with, with a, a fucking grenade. With a fucking grenade. Nah, that's not right. it's, it doesn't work. It's like the old guy from fucking Hot Fuzz. It's just a load of junk. <laughs> yeah, well, they're not gonna care about that because you just scared them shitless. Yeah, you can't. I mean, I've told you guys what happened when I asked, I forgot to take a trick lighter out of my purse. Yeah. I thought I was going to fucking Gitmo. Thank God they had a sense of humor. They were like, we have to confiscate this. I'm like, please, please. Going to jail. You were going to fuck. They shut down the airport because you brought in a fucking grenade. You idiot. Yeah. They don't fuck around with that stuff anymore. How did you think this was going to be Okay. Unless, and here's, here's, unless this guy has some really asshole friends. Who put it in his bag without him. Who put it, yeah. Well, yeah. that's, ask you things like, did you pack your own bags and have your bags been left unattended for any period? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I guess the first thing we learned this week is pack your own bag. Yeah. And don't pack a grenade. Even don't if pack. Don't pack pack a fucking grenade we've learned that um uh you can in fact walk out of a store with a 1500 guitar 1500 dollar guitar in your pants that is apparently a thing and what the irony is we did that story after you lectured them on having to work hard for crime yeah well you do though he didn't he played the Can I Help You riff. And the long haired guy came over, took the thing off the wall, wandered off. And he walked out with a $1,500 guitar <sighs> for his shitty ass garage band. We've learned that uh, if, uh, if you're trying to escape the police in sub zero temperature, pants. Yeah. Leave them on. 
Maybe oh. a jacket also. You're not getting down because you're going to start screaming again. This cat, I swear, you're not. You're not getting down because the minute I let you down, you're going to start screaming again. I love Grady. I... Uh, We've learned that um, you can get your friend out of jail by paying the bail. Yeah. That's that's a better plan. If you're going to try and be a con artist, details are important. We've learned that um, when you're trying to ask your neighbor for assistance or a favor, um, don't scare the shit out of them. God, no. And once again, we've learned that the uh, press secretary for the White House is a moron. Is a complete idiot. I think we'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure it'll be all right. I'm sure everything's going to be okay. 